evening. Uh, it, it is still spring, right? The month of May. April showers and May flowers. Something of that sort. Amen. Well, we are glad to be in the house of the Lord, right? Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And uh, I know that there will be more uh, drifting in. There always is. Uh, but thank you for being punctual and being on time tonight. I'm going to let you sit down for just a moment because uh, we have several prayer requests we need to make mention of, and I'd like for us to just take a moment for them to soak in. Uh, Sister Tina, what is uh, the verdict of your mom? Said that she's had she's been diagnosed with cancer. Devastating news this week to the Bowman family. And I uh, want to lift them all up in prayer. God can uh, bring healing and help. Amen. Uh, How many of you have been in excruciating pain before? We know what that's like, don't we? And to, to have that um, weighing over you that there seems to be no end to it is, is uh, devastating, devastating. So we will definitely pray for Sister Tina's mom. Let's pray for Aaron, uh, Sister Linda's son, um, struggling. Just thought it was gallstones and all. And needs God to deliver him from alcohol and from a life of sin, basically, that God would bring help to him. 20, how old? 21 years old and hospitalized uh, twice already for alcohol uh, poisoning in his body. Needing God to deliver him. Amen. Let's pray for uh, Sister Brenda and Brother Robert Moran. Uh, they need they need the Lord to touch them. And um, some good news in the midst of all this. Sister Pam uh, does not uh, indeed have cancer. We prayed about that, so thank God for that. And um, let's pray for Tony. Tony's in the hospital sick again. Ask God to intervene for him. And it um, seems like I'm missing some. Sister Bianca. Little Olivia had uh, surgery last week and um, need the Lord to just continue to heal her body. Amen. Let's pray for Vanessa. They had a hearing today from some more evidence that, uh, that, that came to bear on one of the jurors, I guess, and uh, uh, it's now in the hands of the judge. Let's just ask God to touch that judge's heart and intervene in his mind and uh, just against all odds do the miraculous. Amen. Does anyone else have a prayer request that I've not uh, uh, covered th this evening? Our friends in Arkansas, we got some news on them the other day that Sister Donna's sister was um, by all accounts passing, I guess. Uh, she's She's real bad in, in ICU and doesn't look good. 
and also Ruby Justice, uh, um, one of my best friends, Kelly, his wife, um, has terminal cancer and needing God to help her. Yes, and Josh Webster's dad, I knew that's, that's one I knew that um, Brother Josh Webster's dad uh, is needing the Lord to touch him. His, uh, his blood sugar and potassium levels have been all over the place. And um, let's ask God to touch him. Sister Tina. Amen. Amen. And that's not even to mention the financial needs. We're living in a, uh, a very tumultuous time financially in this country, aren't we? Uh, they said that uh, some said some are uh, forecasting that the price of fuel will get over $7 a gallon here in Colorado before the end of summer. Uh, some say even by within the next month, 30 days. So uh, anyway, uh, times are... Uh, a tightening, uh, but God is still, you know, God is not worried about none of this. He's not threatened by none of this. And uh, so our hope is in Jesus, amen? So let's stand together and take these needs before the Lord. I just wanted to just let them soak in a minute tonight. Uh, we're, I know a lot of people are heavy hearted, and uh, we try to remain optimistic. We try to remain hopeful, and uh, our faith tries to rise in the midst of it all because God is able. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your love and your kindness. Thank you, God, that you are supremely capable of doing the miraculous, Lord. And we call upon you, Lord. We know that there are things that uh, even are self-inflicted. They're brought on by our own uh, doing. But Lord, you are able to, in spite of our faults and weaknesses, you're able, Lord, to uh, make, make things beautiful, make things healthy, make things good. So Lord, it's with uh, that hope and that faith that we come to you, Lord, in calling on you to please intervene for little Olivia, Lord, please touch her body. God, please continue to bring healing to her so that she could have a normal life and that she could uh, run and play like all the other kids and, and just uh, have a, a wonderful life. God, I pray that you would touch Brother Josh Webster's dad, Dean, tonight. Dean Webster, Lord, please intervene for him. A man that loves you dearly. God, I pray that you would touch his uh, body, Lord, and the diabetes, Lord, and, and the potassium levels and all that's going on, which is a lot. God, I pray that you'd touch him. Lord, I pray for Sister Bianca's mom that you would just uh, <coughs> stay this, <coughs> this uh, uh, discovery off, Lord, that they found in her body. Lord, I pray that, that you would uh, let it be benign and there'd be nothing wrong. Please, God, and let her know that it was you that did that. We lift up Sister Tina's mom to you tonight. Oh, God, we call out to you. We cry out to you. Lord, and you hear the cries of your people. Please intervene and take this pain away, God. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, bring healing and help, Lord. And God, do what needs to be done in her heart. As Sister Tina said, that she could draw closer to you mostly. God, let that happen. Please let that happen, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we lift up Vanessa tonight and uh, her situation, the trial and uh, the judge. God, we ask that you would please. You said you had the way, your, your way in the king's heart. And so, Lord, Lord, we know that this judge is no different. You can, you can change things in his mind, in his, in his uh, heart. God, I pray that you would do that. Please, Lord, minister. Touch Aaron tonight. God, I beg of you to deliver him from a life of sin. Help him, God, to see the, 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 the dead-end street that the devil has planned for him. And God, help him to turn around and humble himself and call on you, Lord, for, uh, for salvation. And Lord, God, I pray that you would deliver him. Lord, I pray for Tony, the same thing. The drugs, Lord, the, the sinful life. God, I just beg of you that, uh, that you would please uh, get a hold to his heart and warm his heart. 
God, deal with him and love him. God, I ask you to draw him to a point of repentance. Please intervene, Lord. God, I just ask that tonight that you would uh, show yourself strong in all these requests. And now, Lord, I know that there's many others. There's lost loved ones and family members that we'd, we, we're begging you to save. God, there's financial needs. Lord, there's so many things that we have not even touched the surface of. But God, I pray that your people would look to you and we would cry out to you and we would cast our cares upon you for you care for us. We love you, Lord. We love you and we worship you. We give you praise tonight because we, we've seen you answer so many prayers and we've watched you come on the scene so many times when it looked impossible, when all the evidence showed and all the, 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 everything that we were looking at said death and defeat, you came on the scene and you brought deliverance and help. Do it again, God. We love you, Jesus, and we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Well, I trust and pray tonight that uh, you are encouraged in your spirit, even in the midst of all of the weightiness around, that you have found a, uh, a joy and a strength. Thank you, Brother Wells. Amen. I want us to sing tonight, page 279. Oh, I want to see him. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's the way I feel tonight. I want to see Jesus. I'd love to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Before morning. Let's sing it. This is an old, this is an old one. Let's sing it. Y'all sing loud. Would you sing loud tonight? As I journey through the land, singing as I go, and pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Oh, many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, and through Him I must win. And oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night. But I'll cling more close to Him, He doth give me light. And Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. Oh, but my Lord goes ahead and leads whatever be tied. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Oh, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When before the Lord look toward the mountains high, and behold my Savior there leading in the fight. Oh, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valleys low. Oh, guiding me, I can see as I onward go. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of His saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my part, He does safely keep. And he leads me gently on through this world below. Oh, he's a real friend to me, and oh, I love him so. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. When there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Oh, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace 
and on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice amen amen praise god hallelujah amen i remember something that brother james snow uh, told us when he was here preaching for us one time he said if you would just how much richer the services would be if you would just make a promise to god that every time you went to sing a song that you would think about the words you're singing and you would focus on it. Amen. Do you want to see the Lord? Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight and I have finished my course. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. Amen. If you're looking forward to seeing Jesus, you've got something to sing about. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I wonder if somebody might have a, a burning testimony of something good God's done uh, for you. Sister Bianca. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys, and we know that God has good things for Sister Olivia. Amen. Well, I want to tonight, before I give anybody else a chance to testify, I want to say that uh, Souls Harbor, we need to uh, give Brother Eric Dutois tonight a good hand of appreciation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Eric. Uh, Brother Eric and his family have been a blessing to Souls Harbor. Uh, they've come and sang at uh, Trucker's Day and our uh, dinner we had. Uh, and they, they have uh, just been a blessing to us. Have a wonderful family. And he is very gifted with all the sound and stuff. And, and I, I mentioned to him at the Trucker's Banquet. And I said, I think we need some help getting our, uh, our sound and our, our, you know, all that kind of updated. And he said, well, let's see what you got. And he looked at it, and he, he kind of timidly said, he said, what kind of budget do you have? Because <laughs> he's dealt with preachers before, <laughs> and he knows that preachers want everything cheap, cheap, cheap. Amen. Because we are trying to be good stewards of the, the, the uh, funds. But... Um, he is a shopper. And I said, well, what do you think it would cost? And he said, well, tell me what your budget is first. And so I shot a number out, and he said, I think we can work with that. And he went, he went to work. And, Brother Eric, I would, just, I would really just like for you to just kind of tell the church, kind of the first couple of days there, what happened and how God brought all this to bear. Absolutely, please do. It's all good, Brother Gary. It's fine. What kind are they? Tell the folks. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so it, 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 it's, it's, there's, and then there was another, and this 
Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And and we we come in uh, under budget, and uh, brother uh, Eric has has uh, got us the bright board where we can expand it uh, as as the Lord blesses us with more musicians, and we can have more uh, um, things that were that are needed. And so, uh, and, and it sounds great. And when him and Bryce start talking, it's all going right over my head, and I get that kind of deer in the headlights look. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I trust you, and um, uh, and so I thank you so much, brother Eric. You are you've been a you've been a friend to us, and I appreciate that very much. And we just wanted to say thank you. I know he's he's just uh, snuck over here to help Bryce kind of get jump started. They just got these wired in, uh, finished up. Just a while ago, <laughs> so this is a this is a, a maiden voyage for our sound. How's it sound out there? Does it sound okay? It sounds way better up here. So if y'all don't think it sounds good out there, all of you get up here and let, we'll sing a, we'll sing to the pews, okay? <laughs> but it sounds way good, amen. Anyway, anybody else got a testimony? I know something good's happened in somebody's life this week, but brother Swartz. Amen. There's a man that used to say, I have no sad stories to tell. Um, one, one man used to say about, uh, about Monica, Sister Monica, that she, she's under the cloud when she's under the cloud when glory is coming up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. What a wonderful testimony that is. Thank God for uh, the increase in business. Amen. Well, I, I got a testimony. We were uh, driving, Bryce and I were driving a couple days ago on uh, North Powers. And uh, ripped a drive shaft out of my tandem. And uh, so I'm sitting there making phone calls, getting everything arranged. And uh, the tow truck driver comes. His name's John. And uh, the Lord had an appointment. It was an expensive appointment for me. <laughs> but, uh, but an appointment nonetheless. And uh, turns out uh, that John is going to bring his, uh, his wrecker. For Trucker's Day and uh, big old Randy's towing. Did you know those, uh, those, big, uh, those big tow trucks like that are $800,000 a piece? And empty, they weigh 79,000 pounds. That's a lot of muscle. And uh, he's going to bring that for Trucker's Day and hang a truck, I think, he said. Uh, and uh, anyway, turns out I had had a conversation with him three weeks earlier at a gas station. And it was almost as if God said, I'm not done with you guys' paths crossing. Amen. And I got to talk to him about the Lord. He took our information down. And he, I, I fully believe he'll probably be here Sunday. Amen. Uh, today, a man called me. And uh, uh, Sister Mary and I have been praying about uh, some things in our business and what all. And a guy called me, an insurance agent called me. And uh, he wanted to talk about, uh, you know, what he wanted to talk about. And before the conversation was over, he was, uh, we, we just totally forgot about talking about insurance. And we was talking about the Lord. And he said, well, I, uh, he said, I, uh, I've been looking for another church. He said, I, I, I've, uh, I've had, I've kind of been all over the place. I was baptized Mormon. He said, I don't really believe that. He said, I've been to Catholic churches. I've been there. And he started telling, he'd been everywhere. And I said, well, he said, what do y'all believe? I said, we believe the Bible. We believe the Bible. And we say amen or oh me. We believe the Bible. And uh, 
we just got to talking about the Lord, and, and he, said, he said, I'm coming to your church. He said, I'm coming. Amen. Amen. So I just, I just share that little bit of information with you just to say, it don't matter if you're talking to an insurance agent or a wrecker driver. Amen. Bring up the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Because God might have an appointment for you. And I tell you what, I would have missed that Randy's towing appointment. I would have not got in on that one. I would have avoided that. That was a $624 appointment. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? It should have been a $900 appointment. So uh, that, was, uh, that was good. We talked about the Lord a little bit. Oh, and by the way, this uh, tarp, Brother Eddie, that we're going to try to set up out here, I called the man today. I took the tarp up to get it repaired, called the man today. I said, do you have our tarp ready? He said, yeah. He said, I think so. Let me step out here and ask. He stepped out there. He stepped back in. He said, yeah, we got it ready. He said, what do you use this tarp for? I said, well, I said, I pastor a church, and we, I drive a truck, and we have Trucker's Day. And I said, I'd love for you to come to Trucker's Day, and we're going to put up this tent and feed these truckers and just have a wonderful time trying to share Jesus with them. I didn't know if he was a Christian or not. We talked a minute, and uh, I said, well, anyway, I said, you get to the tarp repaired? He said, yeah. I said, do you think it's going to be stronger than it was? He said, yeah, I do. He said, we did a good job. He said, it, it, it was, it's a good tarp. I think you'll be fine with it. I said, well, what do we owe you? He said, no charge. He said, no charge. I said, oh, no, I didn't call to get it. I didn't call to get a, just, you know, a, a preacher get something free. He said, no. He said, I want to I contribute. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! I just tell you, God, God, uh, he, He's able to, He's able to do it. Amen? Amen, Amen. Brother Wells, would you come and help us receive the offering? Anybody else want to testify? Uh, come on, Brother Wells, they, you, they can testify while you're coming if they do. Anybody? I thought Braden might want to testify. Amen. Brother Robert, would you help him receive the offering, please, sir? Thank you, my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Wells, would you mind praying over the offering? Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I have one other testimony. I thank God that this gout is uh, going away out of my foot. It's still a little painful, but not near what it was yesterday. Uh, so I praise God for that. Amen. But does anybody else have a testimony? I don't want to. I don't want to treat you. I don't want to cheat you out of testifying, Sister Tina.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, yes, amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, amen. Amen. We will be joining you in prayer, Sister Tina, for that. Amen. And, uh, you know, God gets us in positions to where we're willing to listen. And um, it's a, the Bible says, Remember the crea thy Creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil day comes not. The evil day's coming. <laughs> Amen. And it's a lot better if we can do it early. But if we get it done late, praise God, we got it done. Amen. Well, I don't want to just ramble on up here. So, Brother Eddie, Brother Eddie's going to be preaching for us tonight. Uh, so come on, come on, Brother Eddie. Share with us what the Lord's laid on your heart. And uh, we're going to try to listen to you and try to receive what God has for us. So, amen. We love Brother Eddie, don't we? Amen. Preach for us. Well, I hope you guys don't have to try too hard to receive what I have to say tonight. <laughs> Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be up here preaching the Word of God, and I count it an honor and a blessing. And tonight I am very nervous, so, but I, but I do believe the Lord has put something on my heart that I do believe will touch someone tonight. Um, when I was preparing this message, it came in my head a couple, oh, actually a couple months ago, not weeks, months. And I kind of put it off, put it off, and then when, when Pastor Gary told me I was preaching, it came back to my mind and tried to push it off, but it kept coming back. So this is what the Lord wants me to preach tonight, and I hope it touches someone tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, we all have that person that, that actually before I start I would like to ask Pastor Thomas to pray for me please that I won't be so nervous and that we all can just have an open spirit amen Amen. Thank you. We all have that someone in our lives where that we chase for their approval or their acceptance. And it could be either a family member, a friend, a coworker, a boss. But we go, we, we sometimes go through very, very big lengths to achieve that goal. And when we when we achieve that goal, we feel secure about it. When we get that acceptance, when we get that approval, we feel secure about it. And we go through, like I was saying before, we go through a lot of, a lot of great lengths, whether that means we change ourselves, whether that means we start changing our identity, whether we start acting different. But sometimes we do whatever it takes to reach that goal. And um, and the, the, the definition of identity is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. And the definition of secure is free from anxiety of fear, stable, and safe. We try to find our identity in this world to feel secure in it. This world is full of fear. There is nothing stable here or it or or it, it, it isn't e safe either. Where will we find that security in? Where? Through the love of God. Amen. Amen. 
But to be able to feel secure, we must know. We must know our true identity in Christ. And I want to read in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, if you all can please stand for the reading of the word. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an accepted end. Amen. You all can be seated. For we read that God knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That sounds secure, doesn't it? That sounds like security to me. And I want to ask you all, how do we, how do you see yourself through God's eyes? Not how does God see us, because there is a difference. It is us seeing ourselves through his, per, his perspective, not God seeing us through our, per, through our perspective. Do you see yourself as loved, forgiven, wanted, important? The devil will do anything he can to tell you lies to bring you down on your self-worth. The devil tricked Eve into eating from the tree, and she did eat. And they knew and as soon as they ate, they knew that they were naked. As soon as they listened to that lie, they were falling down. They knew that they were naked. And when God came walking in in the cool of the day, they hid themselves for, from him because they were afraid because they were naked. The devil tried to trick Eve, and he did. She listened to the lies that the devil was telling her. And because they listened to the lies, they knew right away that they were naked. It says their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked. See what the lies of the enemy does, does to us? When we believe the lies from the devil, it starts to destroy our self-worth. For the devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can make you think that you are not worthy or loved, he will destroy you. First of all, um, what is our identity in Christ? Uh, to in, the, in the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. That right there itself is honoring. That God wanted to create us just like him. Grab, for instance, parents, when they have a little baby, the mom usually dresses up that little boy like their dad because they love the dad so much. I tell Whitney all the time, I said, if I had a little daughter that looked just like you, I would be so happy because I love her so much. I want the exact replica of her, just like God. He loved us so much that he was willing to make the exact same replica of himself. God is almighty. God is beautiful, and he made us the same way. So right there is an identity of Christ, that he made us the same way. And, um, and, and he is not ashamed of us, that he was happy to make us look like him. Um, in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things are become new. And old things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, re reconcil reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The definition of reconciliation is res, re, restoring of friendly relations. And one thing I forgot to mention was that I guess I'm having a hard time explaining to you what God has put on my heart. 
God has put on my heart that if we know our identity in Christ, not our identity in this world, who we are in this world, but who we are in Christ, we will be secure in him. We won't be insecure in this world. And when I say secure, not just mentally secure, but physically secure. All these needs that before prayer, there were so many needs. You will know that God has it under control because you know your identity in Christ. You know that he loves you. He knows that he cares for you, and he knows that he will do anything for you. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you, that God, that the, knowing the identity, our identity in Christ is very important to feel secure in this life on earth. And, and that's why in the beginning I asked that, uh, that's why in the beginning I mentioned that we all have someone that we try to please, someone who we want the acceptance from. Why are we chasing them when God is the one that matters in our life? Amen. Amen. If we are of Christ, we have a new identity. Our identity is his children. We are adopted into his family through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we all know what it takes to become a part of his family. But like I said, tonight, I'm just trying to encourage someone to be, to know their identity in Christ and be secure in it. To be secure through any hardship in their, in their, in their life. And stop letting the devil tell you lies like he told Eve and tricked her. And once he tricked her, they became insecure. They knew that they were naked. Yes, we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But that scripture doesn't end there. It says, but through the gift of, but the, through the gift of Christ, we have eternal life. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his worksmanship. And this just came to my mind. Um, we are his worksmanship. Anyone who does carpentry takes pride in their work. When you do a good work and it looks beautiful, you take pride in it. And if we are God's worksmanship, he takes pride in us. He thinks wonderful things of us. Amen. And in Psalms chapter 139, verses 1 through 5. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. This scripture really touched me when I was going through a hard time. Because in the very beginning it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. God of this universe who created all things, who created Everything took time to search me and to know who I am, to know every depth of me, to know how beautiful I am. He took time out of his busy life to love me. Amen. And that is so wonderful to me. He took time to search you and he knows every last bit of you. And for some of us to say, I ain't nothing, I'm not good enough. To listen to the lies the devil tells you, when God knows you, he took time to search you. He made millions, billions of people, and he took time for you and me. Amen. Amen. He must really love us to take every single one of us and dig into our hearts and make us one by one so special and so unique. And one thing that frustrates me is when People say, God made me this way, whether it's attitude, anger, stubbornness. No, God did not make you that way. God made you perfect for his will, perfect for his will to be done in your life. And just you saying that he made me this way is you giving up. Don't give up. Don't give up, Jalen, because God knows you and he has searched you. 
Amen. I want to read from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, which is my opening text. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And this goes back to that he did not make you to have whatever you blame your flaws on God for. He made you to have thoughts of peace, not of evil. I want to read from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I know I keep saying I want to read. I want to read from a lot of scriptures. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Like Bryce preached to us, a little while back, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. If we live our life trying to please God, no, try, if, we li if we live our life to God's standard and strive to please Him, we will find security in that. Instead of trying to please other people on this earth that is all temporal. Knowing that he, and just knowing that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins because he loved us so much should bring you comfort, peace, and take away all the anxiety, the definition of security. Because you know we serve a God that will do anything to, for us because of his love for me and you. He made, him, he made us his own image, and he's proud of that. He took time to search you and to know you, each and every single one of us. And I just want to leave you with this question. In who are you trying to find security in? In the world that's temporal? Or in a God that loves us deeply and will never fail us? Amen. What a great message. I, uh, I had a conversation with Brother